Yankees Entertainment and Sports Network. Clement weather here in Baltimore, but it is time for baseball as the Yes Network presents New York Yankees baseball tonight. It's the New York Yankees against the Baltimore Orioles in game two of a day night doubleheader from Oriole Park at Camden Yards. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Yankees baseball along with Ken Singleton. I'm Michael K. The Yankees still have not cleansed home field for the wild card game Tuesday. It remains the magic number at a very stubborn one. Yankees had a chance in the first game. They did not get it done as they lose 9-2. to two. And a big reason why, Manny Machado had a game. Yeah, he's having a tremendous season for these Baltimore Orioles, both offensively and defensively. Let's look at the defensive side first. This is a play made during the first game, and this is something they see spent all season long. They've seen this, too. This is his 34th home run of the year. Manny Machado, the second youngest Oriole ever to hit more than 30 home runs in a season. All right, so let's take a look at the game two pitching matchup brought to you by People's United Bank N.A. See what know-how can do for you. It's Ubaldo Jimenez getting the start for the Orioles. And for the Yankees, it's Luis Severino. And this rookie has shown, Kenny, that he belongs up here. He belongs up here, and you can see why uh, Brian Cashman, Yankee GM, didn't want to trade Mr. Severino than the trade deadline. He's got electric stuff. Great slider, tremendous fastball, uh, working changeup. He can use that from time to time. But Severino, in his last few starts, seven starts to be exact, is five and one. He's really been a, a fine for these Yankees down the stretch. All right, can he get a split of this doubleheader and get the Yankees to go home for Tuesday's wild card game? Stick around, find out. Lineups, first pitch, baseball, Yankees O's, next, right here on Yes.
Honda for You sales event is happening now. Hurry in today. By REMAX, nobody sells more real estate than REMAX. And by People's United Bank N.A., putting the power of know-how to work for you. While the rain has started to come down, it rained a little bit between games as this day-night doubleheader. But uh, once the Orioles took the field, the rain started to come down a bit harder. It looks like they're committed to starting in this. So that means they're committed to playing in this unless it gets a lot worse. So the Orioles taking the field. Let's take a look at the Game 2 Yankees starting lineup presented by Lexus. Yankees are 87 and 73, and they lead off their center fielder, Jacoby Ellsbury. Batting second and playing left field, Dustin Ackley. Carlos Beltran, the DH, will hit third. Cleaning up the catcher, Brian McCann. Greg Bird at first base will bat fifth. Batting sixth, playing second base, Rob Refsnyder. D.D. Gregorius, the shortstop, bat seventh. Batting eighth, playing right field, Slade Heathcott. And Brendan Ryan, the third baseman, is going to bat ninth. Here's Jacoby Ellsbury approaching home plate. We're just about ready to go. Let's take a look at the pitcher out there for the Orioles tonight. Ubaldo Jimenez, 31 years old, four wins in his career against the Yankees, but he also has five losses. There's his numbers on the year. Let's be start number 32. Let's check out a pitcher scouting report brought to you by your Tri Honda dealers. He's three and one, having a strong September. Three and one in September as he leads the Orioles in strikeouts, and he also has a very good split finger fastball. Ellsbury's ready. Jimenez is ready. Let's do it here in Baltimore. And the pitch is inside. We are underway. Mike Michalinski is the home plate up. Mark Wegner at first. Sam Holbrook at second. Toby Basham is at third. And it's really coming down right now and getting windy here at Camden Yards as well. These do not look like pleasant conditions. Which to play a baseball game. Kind of gloomy here right now. Well, if you were here this week, a lot of rain this week in Baltimore. And the game they played against the Toronto Blue Jays, the game that the Blue Jays actually clinched the American League East, it was pouring. And even John Gibbons, the manager, was Blue Jays manager saying, hey, what are we playing? He didn't want anybody getting injured. Count three and one on Ellsbury. Ellsbury did not play in the first game. The Yankees lost that one nine to two. Foul away. Jimenez is the leading winner on the Baltimore staff with 12 wins against, he has 10 losses on the year. He was signed to a free agent contract a couple of years ago. Struggled last year, pitched a little better this year. Right back to him in as he knocks it down. And there's one away. Why don't we check out the Orioles defense, which is presented by Geico? It's Pierce, Reimold, and Para left to right in the outfield. In the infield, Machado playing this 161st game of the year. Jonas at short, Flaherty at second, Davis is at first. Caleb Joseph behind the plate, Weeders was beat. Behind the plate in the first game is Ubaldo Jimenez is on the mound. Here's Dustin Ackley, the left fielder today, and the pitch is low, 1 0. Count 2 0. Uh, during his career, and uh, of course this year as well, Jimenez is. Sometimes struggled with his control. Falling behind on counts, walking batters. He's in the top 10 in walks in the American League. And uh, if you notice, he has kind of a uh, unusual, unique delivery, which has been altered somewhat by uh, pitching coach Dave Wallace. He kind of made it a little bit more compact, but he really drops the ball behind him before he delivers. Popped up behind the plate, Joseph. Toward the screen, but it's in the seats. This might make it hard for hitters to pick up, but it also sometimes makes it hard for him to throw strikes. That arm has to travel a long way. You can see he's signaling to Joseph. Ball was fouled back behind home plate. Two two.
two two. Three and two. Yeah, a lot of deep counts when Jimenez is on the mound. He he uses that pitch count up pretty rapidly. And Ackley works a walk. Let's look at the game time weather presented by Bigelow T. 54 degrees, wind 15 to 25 miles an hour, the high humidity. Forecast is cloudy and cool with periods of rain, and we are in one of those periods right now. Here's Carlos Beltran, did not play in the first game. And pitch outside, 1 0. Beltran looking for one more home run. Get him to 20 on the season. Nice round number. Rounded to first. There's one. And there's two. <laughs> two more. Who caught it? <laughs> Whoever caught it, it's a double play. Yankees, no runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left. And the Orioles coming back. Off batting second and playing right field, Gerardo Parra. Manny Machado, the third baseman, hits third. Cleaning up first baseman, Chris Davis. Steve Pearson, left field, will bat fifth. Batting sixth, the D8, Steve Clevenger. Caleb Joseph will catch up at seventh. Batting eighth, playing second base, Ryan Flaherty. Paul Janish is the shortstop. He's going to bat ninth. Well, there's a big clock. It sits atop the scoreboard. And uh, there is Luis Severino. Like he managed from the Dominican Republic. This will be his 11th major league start. And you can see the numbers are, are pretty good 50 strikeouts and 55 in the third innings. Let's check out the pitcher's scouting report. Why don't you buy your Tri Honda dealers? Five wins, one loss. Last uh, seven starts. His fastball, 95.95 miles per hour. So he just rounded off the 96 miles per hour. That's the average. And right handed batters are hitting just 202. Against Severino. His ERA at Yankee Stadium this year, 3.16, even better on the road, 2.43. Well, you are keeping score at home. That double play that ended the top of the first has scored 3 5 1. So that's a rare scoring for a double play, but that's exactly what it was as Machado took the throw at second, and then Ubaldo's Jimenez took the throw at first. Pitch to Reimold as a strike, and there was a little battle about who was going to get the throw. I got it. You take it. <laughs> Fly ball, deep left. Going back at the on the track at the wall. See ya. A leadoff home run for Reimold, and the Orioles lead 1 0. Well, Rymel turns around a pretty good fastball, his sixth home run of the season. And just like that, Baltimore jumps out in front. Rymel brings a little power to the table. That ball is right down the chute, and he jumps on it with both feet. Here's Parra, and the pitch is high. 
And for Ramo, this is his first career lead off home run. That one is looped into center field. It's going to dunk in there for a base hit. Ellsbury gets the ball in. So a single for Parra. Why don't we check out the Yankees defense presented by Geico? Acme's in left tonight, Ellsbury in center, and Heathcott over in right. Infield, Ryan, Gregorius, Ref Snyder, and Bird third to first. McCann behind the plate, and Severino's on the mound. So Gardner and Headley and A Rod, who played in the first game, they're not playing in the second game. The Orioles have six players that played in the first game that are in the lineup again in the second. Here's one of them. Manny Machado has played in every game this year. This is his 161st game. And there's a strike. Only player in the big leagues to play in every game this year. in the first game. Yeah. Now starts the second game with a hit. He goes. Throw to second. In plenty of time. As McCann throws it to Ref Snyder who applies the tag. And when you look at the replay of this watch the mechanics and how quickly McCann gets rid of the ball and that's one of the keys here. power has got to jump. But the th well the ball's there waiting on him. Slider. That first strike. Here's another strike to second base. And Ref Snyder applies a tag, and it wasn't even close. I spoke to McCann about how effective he's been throwing out base runners, and he gives all the credit to Yankee bullpen coach and catching instructor Gary Tuck. He said he changed the way I did everything. Footwork, release. He said before I got here and worked with Tuck, he said, I believe, you know what? I was just the guy who was going to throw out 20% of base of course. And I was, you know, that was just me. He said he changed it completely. Uh, now he's over 30%. Count three and two on Machado. No Oriole batter before tonight's ball game had ever faced Luis Severino, so this is their first look at him outside of video. And Machado looks at a call third strike. Two away. By the way, that's the eighth home run that Severino has allowed. That's as many as he allowed in his whole minor league career. Well, he said the difference here is you make a mistake, they, they're going to hit it out. They don't miss. Take a look at the Honda League leaders. The home run leaderboard has Chris Davis atop with 45, then Nelson Cruz, the former 0 44, Trouton Donaldson at 41. One and one. This is one of those nights where the players, both the hitters, the pitchers, uh, and on defense, you have to shut out the conditions. You know, it, it's of course you know it's not bright and sunny or not a nice warm summer night, but got to get the job done. Blow on the fingers, move around a little bit more in the field. The one-two. Maybe go back in the clubhouse when your team's hitting and it's not your turn to come to the plate. Warm up a little bit.
Sun got hit by the pitch. We get another look. Slider down and in. Just oh, awesome. oh my goodness. You know that does not feel good. That is the eighth time that Davis has been hit by a pitch this year. He actually got hit in the first game, but it swung at the pitch and didn't get first base. Here's Steve Pierce. Fouls it away. That'll go into the corner. Let's see if Davis can score. Feel it out there by Ackley. They're waving home Davis. Here's the throw. Here's the play. McCann can't handle it as Davis slides in with the second run for the O's. So an RBI double for Pierce. With two outs, third base coach Bobby Dickerson took a chance to send Davis. And the play was actually executed pretty well by the Yankees. And one of the keys to this play, at least a couple of them, Gregorius, of course, with the strong arm, but the short hop not able to be handled by McCann. And Davis is going to come in and score. The ball was there in plenty of time. A couple of things that ball got hung up in the corner and actually had to go get it. And that took a little time. But the ball bounds off the wall. Maybe Dickerson would hold Davis a third. You can see the collision at home plate. He had to go get it. That took a little time. Gregorius, the strong arm, strong throw, but McCann couldn't handle it. With two outs, you take a chance by sending the runner. So Pierce, who was 0 for 5 in the first game, picks up a double here. Here's Clevenger. And there's a strike. Two quick runs against Severino. And the O's lead 2 0. 1 and 2. So right off the bat, it's going to be an uphill climb for Joe Girardi and the Yankees. Rounded to third. Ryan to Bird, and that will do it. But the Yankees give up two runs on three hits, and it started with this swing by Nolan Reimold. A leadoff home run at the end of one. It is two nothing O's.
Toyota is the official hybrid vehicle of the Yankees. Who do you think should be the American League Manager of the Year and why? Well, let's see. Bird please says Jeff Bannister because no one had the Rangers even close to making the playoffs. Well done getting them there. He has been very good, although they suffered a tough loss today. Oh, my goodness. Follow Yes Network and tweet us your responses using hashtag Yankees Prius to keep the conversation going. In case you didn't see that, between games, we were all watching him. The Rangers led 10-6 going into the ninth inning, and the Angels scored five runs. And they ended up winning the game 11-10. And the game ended when Elvis Andrews stole second. was in there by plenty, but overslid the bag, and the tag was held on him, and that was the final out of the game. And the Angels got several two-out hits to tie and then take the lead. Unbelievable. Here's the final play. Now this is Andrew stealing second. He, you can see he's in there, but Eric Ibar keeps the tag on him, and you can see there's no argument. They did review it, but he was off the bag by far. Look out. And McCann gets blocked. So Chris Davis was hit on the toe. Now McCann gets hit. That's the tenth batter that him. Jimenez has hit this year. Here's Greg Bird. Orioles have three infielders on the right side for the lefty swinging bird. Just one on the left. Bird pinch hit in game one in the seventh inning. Worked the walk. Count one and one right here. Now, Texas's loss, or I should say the Angels' win, really ratchets up the pressure on Houston, mm -hmm. where Houston might have said, you know what? We're not going to burn ourselves out trying to get home field. In the, in the game on Tuesday, but now they're going to have to burn themselves out just to, you know, make the playoffs. They're not in for sure yet. And Kenny, I guess the best thing that could happen would be that those two teams tie, and then there's a game 163 on Monday. Monday, and then they play the Yankees on Tuesday. Right. Two two. Foul back. Now the other night in the uh, playoff clinching game for the Yankees. Both Greg Bird and Rob Refsnyder, who's on deck, homer. And they became the first pair of rookies for the Yankees to homer against the Red Sox in the same game since 1962. Tom Tresh and Joe Pepito hit home runs for the Yankees in 62. And that was at uh, that was actually at Fenway Park. But Tresh and Pepitone did not represent the right side of the infield like these two did. Tresh was the first bat I got at a Yankee uh, bat day. Really? When they used to have all the players' bats. It wasn't just one that was featured, and you hoped that you got your favorite player when uh -huh. you walked in. 3 2. And that one is past Davis and down the right field line. Water slowing it up just a bit. As McCann will get to third, and Bird has to hold it first with a single. Nice little rooster tail as that ball shot by Chris Davis on down the right field line. Fastball that's up. Greg Bird gets the head out. Too quick for Davis to handle. <laughs> and you can see the water coming up as McCann's going to streak over to third base. All right, so the Yankees can come right back after the O scored two. And here is Ref Snyder. Orioles are looking for the double play. 
Ref Snyder had one hit and an RBI in four at bats in game one. And a strike. By the way, that home run he hit uh, third, that was an impressive home run. A lot of Yankee fans here. You can hear them chanting, let's go Yankees, and then the Orioles fans trying to boo them down. He's also trying to win the season series from the Orioles. They've won nine and lost eight with two to go this game and tomorrow. So whoever gets that tenth win wins the season series. Swing and a miss. Big strikeout for Jimenez as he gets Ref Snyder. Strikeout number 1450 in his career. That was right down the middle, and Ref Snyder swung through it. So Gregorius now with runners on first and third one out. And a strike. High fly ball right center. Reimold's there. He'll make the catch. Tagging is McCann. He'll score. And the Yankees are on the board. The Orioles lead two to one. So the hit batter comes around to score. Gregorius gets uh, the runner home from third. And the Yankees have cut the lead in half. Heathcott fouls it away. 0 and 2. Yeah, I'm looking at the numbers as far as uh, players getting that runner home from third with less than two outs. And Gregorius and McCann are actually the players who will have appreciable number of at bats who have done the best on the team. 63%, although now Gregorius goes up a little bit. And the league average, I believe, is 54. Yeah. And if you can do it 7 out of 10, I think you're really getting the job done. Bird leads off first. And now in a slice to left field, and it's a foul ball. Kept slicing, could not stay fair. It started fair, and it foul. Good stop by Caleb Joseph on a pitch in the dirt. He's behind the plate in this second game. Matt Wieters caught the first. Keeps the runner from advancing a base and getting into scoring position. Strike three. Heathcott down looking. Yankees get a run on one hit, one hit batter, and one man left. We go to the bottom of the second. Baltimore two, the Yankees one.
two games. Uh, and then they will have the game Tuesday at Yankee Stadium, but still has not happened. And Severino gave up two runs in the first inning. Yankees got a run back in the second. It's 2-1 Baltimore as we go to the bottom of the second. Bottom third of the order. Caleb Joseph will lead off. And the bottom third of the order are the only three players that did not play in the first game for the O's. And uh, the carrot for the Orioles is to win this game and tomorrow, and then they have a 500 record on the season. Small victories, I guess, when you don't make the playoffs. Certainly, uh, what a difference a year makes. It. Last year they had clinched by this time. Rain is kind of slowing down. Huh? Kind of a mist right now. And the temperature is somewhere in the 50s. Soft ground ball right side. And Ref Snyder gets it to Bird for the first up. Bird comes off the bag and then he realizes, well, Ref Snyder's got this one covered, so he's going to head back to the bag. Now watch Ref Snyder. He's got to get the ball the first. It's actually on the way before Bird turns around. He finds it and the play is made. Clarity right back to the mound. Two way. I stand corrected. Uh, Kenny. Flaherty. Yeah, he played. He played two. So seven of the nine played in the first game. Here's Paul Giannis. And Severino deals. One and oh. Two and oh. There's a strike. Two one on the number nine hitter. 29 pitches, 19 strikes. Rounded to third. Ryan gets a nice hop, sets, and fires. And Severino with a bounce back. One, two, three inning as the O's go down in order. We go to the third. It's 2 1 Baltimore.
of the best seat locations for the 2016 season. In addition, as a new season ticket holder, you'll enjoy significant savings and flexible payment options. Your legacy starts now with 2016 season tickets. Call 212 Yankees or email season tickets at yankees.com today. Brendan Ryan leads off the third inning against Jimenez on the Audi A3 scoreboard, two on O's. And Ryan fouls it back. Ryan started at shortstop in the first game. Donnie working on the, looks like the first baseman's glove. That might be Greg Bird. Just tightening things up. Swing and a miss. Ryan down on strikes. Yeah, we talked about the splitter being a good one, and that was it. Third strikeout for Jimenez. Watch the tumbling effect. Ellsbury back to the mound in the first inning. Lying down the right field line, it is a foul ball. Hook foul. Foul ball and a broken bat. And you can see, let's see, uh, that's first base umpire Mark Wegner, and that is. Way foul. A little concern for Ellsbury after he crashed into the wall the other night at Yankee Stadium. But he's back in there. Well, he said he was good to go the day after, uh -huh. but he did not play. In the clincher, the wild card clincher, and he didn't play in the first game today. The 2 1. 2 and 2. Joseph uh, taking his time there, like that ball might have hit the uh, home plate umpire Mike Muchlitsky. Uh -oh. Ball might have hopped up and hit him in the neck. And a tip held on to by Joseph. And Ellsbury down on strikes. Get another look at this uh, foul ball off the bat of uh, Jacoby Ellsbury. Yeah, got, it seemed like it got up underneath the, the mask. And here is the strike three. Foul tipped into the glove of Caleb Joseph. And two up and two strikeouts for Jimenez. Ackley takes outside. Talked about Camden Yards in the past and how uh, Yankee teams in the past like to come in here. It's a good hitting ballpark. You know, it's close down the lines. I know there's a high scoreboard out there, but uh, certainly reachable. Not too deep in the gaps. 373 in right, 364 in left. You mentioned the Orioles four years in a row. They've hit over 200 home runs, quite a bit of them here. Fly ball, left field. Pierce 
will make the play. And the Yankees go down in order. One, two, three against Jimenez. We go to the bottom of the third. Two, one, Baltimore. In 2006, Derek Jeter goes five for five with two doubles, a home run, to help the Yankees defeat the Tigers 8-4 in game one of the ALDS. A lot of Jeter love here in Baltimore. Sporting the number two. As we go to the bottom of the third inning, and Nolan Rymo will lead off. On the Audi A3 scoreboard, it's 2 1 0s. Reimold let off the uh, first inning with a home run. Severino appeared to lose his uh, balance there, might have slipped on the. The wet man delivering that pitch. So talking about these. With all the rain the last uh, few days, it might have caught a cleat. Maybe not so much of a slip. If my memory serves me correctly, Kenny, the last time he had a slip on the mound, he did not pitch well after that. I think that was against the Blue Jays. Fly ball, right center. Ellsbury makes the catch for the first up. And afterward, he said it had nothing to do with it. Uh -huh. Well, the Blue Jays and the Orioles similar in the sense that they, they hit a lot of home runs. Up there with the Yankees and Houston, those four top home run hitting teams in the league. Is hitting 230 with Baltimore since he came over from Milwaukee to deal in. But when he left Milwaukee, he was fourth in the National League in hitting. He was hitting 328. So maybe the, the change of scenery, the guy getting used to all these uh, pitchers that he hadn't seen that much of, maybe a few in interleague play, but certainly not on an everyday basis. Well, after four hits in the first game and one in this game, he's up to 217. Check that he's up to he's up to 230 with yeah. those. Melt in front of the plate. I can. Two away. Here's a little number and watch McCann. Not only will he, he field the ball, but he's going to take a, a couple of steps forward to get a better angle. There you go. And he'll throw the ball down to Bird for the at. 
give himself a clearer lane, not throwing it as close to the runner going down the line. And they're two down. Here's Manny Machado. Struck out looking in the first inning. Ref Snyder shades him up the middle. Fastball strike. <laughs> mono a mono between these two, oh and two. High fastball. And he tried to leave Earth with this one. Severino deals it. Couldn't catch up to it. High fly ball, left field. Ackley back on the track at the wall. See ya. A home run, Machado, and it's 3 1 Baltimore. Man, he missed the first one, but he didn't miss the second one. Number 35 on the season. Almost in the same area. He was a little quicker this time. And actually going back, it looked like he might have had a chance, but right here he runs out of real estate. What a season for Machado. And Davis grounds one to Ref Snyder. And that will do it here in the third. But Severino has served up his second home run of the night. This one to Manny Machado. 35th of the year when it lands. It's 3 1 Baltimore. Second strike to Manny Machado. The swing and a miss. Manny looked like he wanted to hit at nine miles. But here's a case of a missed target. You see McCann shift to the outside. The pitch is supposed to be there. It's up in here. And it's near where the previous pitch was. And Machado doesn't miss the second time. So mislocation more than anything led to that homer. Beltron belts one to left field. Back pedaling is Pierce and he makes the play. For the first out of the fourth. Yeah, 
Ryan McCann swings at the first pitch and a fly ball to left center. Ryan Mole goes over and makes the play for the second out. Well, here's a free strike for Jimenez because uh, there's no way Bird's going to swing at the first one here. You're not going to allow any pitcher to get out of an inning with three pitches. Strike to Bird. Here's the free strike. Bird singled in the second. Two and two. Top of the fourth, it's three one O's. Jimenez against Severino. Second game of a doubleheader. Two two. Lined and caught by Flaherty. They had him play beautifully for the final out of a one two three inning. Nine in a row retired by Jimenez. That was a seven pitch inning. World title every step of the way. Tuesday night, don't miss the Tri State Ford Yankees pregame show as we get you set for the American League wildcard game. Coverage begins at 7 p.m. right here on Yes, the network that knows the Bombers best. See, Pierce swings at the first pitch and pops it up. Shallow right. Heathcock comes on to make the play. Also, want to remind you that Yes will also have post game coverage following the wildcard game. And pre and post game shows before and after every playoff game as the Yankees move along. You can see that the outfielders are having some uh, issues with the wind on these high fly balls. Clevenger swings and misses. A lot of first pitch swinging, huh? Jimenez was a seven pitch inning last inning. One. 
That was Severino's changeup, and it was well located down and away. If he could perfect that pitch, he's really going to be something with a fastball and a good slider. Right back to Severino. And he'll get Clevenger for the second out. That's going to bring up Caleb Joseph. Yeah, we saw Larry Rothschild uh, work with uh, Nathan Avaldi on the splitter, and that became a viable pitch for him. There's always a tinkering and uh, trying to get these uh, younger pitchers developed into pitchers who have more than two pitches they can rely on. You know, there's some nights that something's not going to work, and you're going to need more than just your fastball. Well, it's not working the way you would like it to work. Drive off the glove of Bird scrambles after it fires to Severino. They got a nice recovery by Bird to complete the one, two, three inning. We'll go to the fifth. Three, one. Orioles, Maryland Crab, very popular here. Not with me, but here. <laughs> LT scoreboard 3 1 O's because the winner of the wild card game as Ref Snyder rips one inside third, and that is going to be extra bases. So Ref Snyder leads off the inning with a double. The winner of the wild card game will play the team with the best record in the American League. Ref Snyder continues to hit. There's a splitter that hangs in the middle of the plate. He just rips it on by Manny Machado. Hey, Machado couldn't get this one. And here comes the two base hit. Third double of the season for Rev Snyder. Third double of his major league career. So runner at second, nobody out. And here is Gregorius. My job, a base hit to right field. Rev Snyder held up. 
So Parra will get the ball in. And the Yankees have runners on the corners and nobody out. Two balls hit well. Didi not wasted any time. The ref side is making sure. Ball falls in. Parra has a good arm. I believe that uh, you know the Yankees being down a couple of runs, it Joe Espada would held him up anyway. What did you say? The Orioles had 47 outfield assists. Yep. Yeah, they lead the majors. And one reason is they can play shallow here. The, the fences are close. Here's Heathcott. Orioles looking for the double play. Pitch up and away. Coming here to Camden Yards, you look out in right field, and we're used to seeing Nick Marquez out there for years, and he played the right field the, like he knew every blade of grass by by name. Yankee fans trying to get this offense going. Two zero. Two and one. And it's a good two zero swing by Heathcott. And that's when you're taking your A swing at something you think you could drive. Ball just tailed just enough that he couldn't square it up. Shallow left, and Pierce can't get there, and it gets by him. Scoring his rough snap. Gregorius had to hold up. He's going to third. He'll be in there. It's a double for Heathcott and an RBI, and the Orioles now lead three to two. Here it is. And you can see that Pierce coming on. Thought he might have a play. He didn't actually lay out. Ball hits off his glove. Gets away. You're going to see this get on Yesmo. Brought to you by your Mercedes Benz Tri State dealer. No, it didn't even touch his glove. Underneath his glove, two base hit. And the Yankees are now just a run down. With the tying run at third, go ahead, run at second. Nobody out. In at the corners, back at short and second. Ryan swings and misses. Right back to the mound. DD took a couple of steps home that headed back. So one away. It's going to get in on the hands and uh, broken bat. You can see Gregorius is quickly retreating to third base. And the Yankees miss an opportunity, but still just one out. Infield still back. Here's Ellsbury. He's 0 for 2 tonight. Grounds it foul. 
Now Baltimore's willing to give up the tying run. If you bring the infield in and something squirts through, then the Yankees are going to get two runs out of it. We're in the fifth. Baltimore three and New York two. Yankees magic number one to clinch the home game in the wild card. Oh and two. They both played in game one. Spectators here in the night portion. Oh two. One and two. That pitch might be thrown to set up the splitter. High fastball splitter usually tumbles down. Oh, and Ellsbury gets plumped. And that's going to load the bases. Obviously not doing that on purpose with a, a one two count. Let's see got him in the uh, middle of the back. Yep. Ooh, right underneath the. Uh, two. <laughs> well you're guarding the plate with two strikes and you don't expect to get hit. Second batter to be hit tonight. And it gives Ackley a chance. Second Yankee to be hit tonight, third batter to be hit tonight. Orioles a double play depth, looking for the ground ball. Yankees have the bases loaded, one out. Popped up. Long run from Machado. He runs out of room. Pretty good numbers with the bases loaded. But he's in the hole, no balls and two strikes. Swing and a miss. Ackley down on strikes. Two away. Fifth strikeout. And this one comes with one out and the base is loaded. Ackley back to the bench. And a missed opportunity for a fly ball. The Astros have taken a quick 1 0 lead, still batting in the top of the first inning. And Phoenix against the Diamondbacks. Here's Carlos Beltran. Beltran wrapped into a double play in the first, a long fly ball to left in the fourth. Bases loaded now, two outs, three infielders on the right side for Beltran. And Jimenez deals a strike. And the pitch chases a high fastball one and two. So Jimenez trying to escape this with just a little damage. Yankees don't want to waste this big opportunity here in the fifth. Bases loaded, two outs, one two count on Beltron. Two and two. Gregorius is at third, Heathcott at second, Ellsbury at first, so good speed all around for the Yanks. This should be uh, the, the action pitch here. Jimenez does not want to go to a full count. 2 2. 
Ooh. And he does go to a full count. He went with the 2-2 uh, two -two splitter. So this will start the merry-go-round. Runners will go. 11 grand slams in his career for Beltron. And the payoff. He took up and in, and that'll force in a run, and the game is tied at three. So Beltron picks up a ribby, and Dave Wallace, the pitching coach, will go out and talk with his right hander. Well, that's just the second walk for Jimenez, but uh, we told you he's in the top 10 in the league in base on balls. And that was a danger for him going to three and two. Beltron, an experienced hitter. We know that uh, the moment is not too big for him as much as he's come through for the Yankees this year. And, well, in that case, base on balls was a big move. Gets an RBI. So the meeting is over, and here's McCann, who was hit by a pitch and scored in the second. And then swung out the first pitch that he saw in the fourth and had a fly ball to center. Bases remain loaded. Game is tied at three. Low and inside, one and oh. Oh, nice block by Joseph. Saved a run. There's what Michael's talking. Splitter in the dirt. Looked like he got a piece of the glove. Chest protector. Rolls up the third baseline. Joseph uh, tracking down the ball, and it was Jimenez coming to home plate to cover. Two zero. -oh. Three and zero. Oh. Yankee fans getting excited here at Camden Yards. Heathcott, Ellsbury, and Beltron third to first. And the pitch pours in a strike. Three and one. T.J. McFarland's up. The three one. Three and two. So another action pitch and another pitch where the runners will be going with two outs. Can he throw three straight strikes? He does, and it's fouled away. The one thing the foul ball does, though, Michael, it breaks the pitcher's rhythm. He threw two straight strikes that McCann took. Now he's got a foul ball, changes his rhythm, and now he has to get back to where he was. And the payoff. High fly ball down the right field line. Par toward the line. And that makes it well into the seats. The wind that's blowing is blowing from left to right, so help that along. He's thrown 30 pitches this inning. You now we talked about how the pitch cap that can go up when you're, you know, don't have the best of control. He's hit a batter. He's walked one this inning and given up three hits. The Yankees have really made them work here in the fifth. Three two. Nubbed up the third baseline foul. Four strikes in a row thrown by Jimenez. He's at 90 pitches. Runners will go again. And the 3 2. Popped up, shallow right center. Who's going to get it? Para makes the play 
and that will do it. But the Yankees tie the score. Two runs, three hits, and the bases are left loaded. We're halfway through. It's a 3-3 game. By your Tri Honda dealers. Hurry to your local Tri Honda dealer for great deals on the 2015 models. All right, so the Yankees tie the score on the Big L T scoreboard. It's 3 3. I was in the top of the fifth, but the Yankees did leave the bases loaded. And here's Ryan Flaherty against Luis Severino. And a strike. When you look at that rally last inning, Ref Snyder, Gregorius had a hit. Heath Cobb with a double. The young Yankees, the younger ones coming through. One and two. Change up. The youngest Yankee of them all out there on the mound tonight. He's 21 years old. Now with the Yankees not winning game one losing at nine to two and failing to clinch the home field advantage what you've done is you've eliminated Luis Severino as an important factor yeah. in that wild card game because if they had won game one then Severino probably would have pitched two innings here tonight. That's it. Check swing did he go. Yes he did and it would have essentially been a glorified bullpen session where. If Tanaka didn't have it, Severino could come in and give them three, four innings, but mm -hmm. I don't think they're going to pitch him on two days rest, Kenny. No, I don't think so either. I mean, you're going to protect a young arm uh, that he has. I, I think that it, it brings Adam Warren back into play in, in that role, who did such a fine job the other night uh, backing up CC Sabathia. And by using Warren then. Took him out of the mix for tomorrow's game if the Yankees still have it. And so that will be Michael Pineda going for the Yanks. The cow. And they're going to warn Severino throwing at Giannis. Warning both benches. Well, Michael, you said a couple guys have been plunked so far tonight. And you know what? 
You're getting hit in the foot. It's not like getting hit in the middle of the back. We saw Ellsbury take one in the middle of the back. And whoa, wow. that was close. You shouldn't be throwing up there. Yeah, that is dangerous. And there's an art to throwing at people and, and throwing behind them yeah. in the head is not the right thing to do. He's getting a little testy here. So now the umpires have the uh, the discretion to throw somebody out if anybody's hit after this. It's not automatic. Ground it and off the glove of Ryan, and it trickles in the left field down the line. Giannis is going to go for two, and he will make it. Ball's hit hard enough to get a call this a double off the bat of Giannis. Ryan on the backhand last top was a doozy overspin on that ball hit hard and Giannis hit second with the potential go ahead run. Well, here's Reimold he hit a home run to uh, lead off the first for the O's and then had a fly ball to center. Three three game we're in the bottom of the fifth. Could not hold up on the pitch upstairs. 0 and 1. Another strike. 0 and 2. Yeah, I know Davis got hit in the first game and he got hit in the second game, but both times they were on sliders down and in where he didn't move his feet quickly enough. McCann got hit down and in, but it was Ellsbury getting hit with a base open. I think that kind of set the Yankees off in a way. But well, what's the likelihood if he's trying to get out of a jam and he plunks somebody on a one two pitch? Why not do yeah. it at the beginning of the count? Yeah, you're right. But a lot of managers, like Tony LaRusso, say you have to be careful. Yeah. I don't care if you did it on purpose. Strike three uh -huh. as Reimold goes down on strikes. Well, anyway, both benches have been worn. Rimo checking his swing, but that pitch is in there for a call strike. Three strikeouts now for Severino. So here's Parra now. He's one for two. Was caught stealing in the first inning after a single, then a number in front of the plate. Giannis leads off second. That one straight back, 0 and 2. Well, we were seeing firsthand. I didn't see much of Parr because he's been in the National League for so many years, but we're seeing he's a pretty good hitter. And he's a good, good defender in the outfield. Very strong throwing arm, and he also could be a free agent at the end of this year. The 0-2. Spoiled that one. 96 miles an hour. Pitch count in great shape for Severino, just 67.
Three three game bottom of the fifth. And the 0-2. Rounded to third. Ryan Fields. And gets Para. And that'll do it here in the fifth. No runs you hit. No errors. And one man left on base. It's a 3-3 game as we go to the sixth. We always think of players in the past that they remind us of. And the player on the left is John Olrude, who played with the Yankees for a while. And look at the finish, the swing, very similar to Styles, the height. And if uh, Greg Burke could have the similar type career that uh, Olrude has, and we take a side angle shot here. Here's the follow through. Olrude was the batting champion in 1993. 295 career average in 17 seasons, and he also won three gold gloves along the way. So uh, just the, just the similarities of a player from uh, days gone by. One and two. Three three game. Olerud like Bird came from uh, out west. Olerud the. Uh, State of Washington. They went to Washington State. And Olerud never spent the day in the minor leagues. And from what I understand, his first hit in the big leagues is the first time he ever used a wooden bat. Swing and a miss. Bird down on strikes. Here's Rob Refsnyder. He started the Yankees two run rally in the fifth with a double inside third. He's one for two. And he was one for four with a ribby in the first game. And a strike. Grounded through for base hit. You know what's interesting about Ref Snyder starting now we've seen him start against uh, left handers primarily this right hander on the mound a pretty tough one in a menace when he's on but he's hit enough that Joe Girardi's had faith in him to put him in there against a right hander he's answered with two hits a double run scored now a single. You know, Joe could have put uh, Ackley at second base and somebody else in the outfield. He's staying with the hot hitter.
pitch to Gregorius is low, 1 0. We're in the six. It's a 3 3 game. Each team with five hits. Yankees have left four on base, the Orioles, two. Ref Snyder at first, held there by Davis. 2 0. High pop up, middle of the infield. And Giannis makes the play. Two outs. And here's Slade Heathcott. Hundred and one pitches for Jimenez. With two outs here in the sixth. People moving around in the Orioles bullpen. No one throwing right now. Snap throw to first. And Ref Snyder is back. Yeah, he got uh, of course called up early this year because of injury to Jacoby Ellsbury, and then he himself became injured. But in his time in the major leagues, look up at the scoreboard now. He's hitting an even 400. is trying to finish the season on a strong note. He has uh, won three of four decisions in September. Runner goes, swung on a miss, throw to second in the dirt, and a stolen base for Ref Snyder as he moves into scoring position. Yeah, he got a very good jump. Took a little while for Jimenez to unload the throw is wide and he's in there easily with his second stolen base. Joseph trying to make up time and comes up with a wide throw. Blocked by Joseph. Now the bullpen's busy for Baltimore. TJ McFarland again. The left hander. And the 3 2. Heathcott works a walk. And that brings up Brendan Ryan, but they are going to uh, pinch hit for Ryan. And they'll stand up Chase Headley. It looked to, to me with a base open. He was being careful with Heathcott because he's a left hand here. He had Ryan on deck. And he threw him a 3 2 off speed pitch. Well, Ryan kind of looked overmatched against Jimenez in his first two at bats with a strikeout and a ground ball back to the mound. So Headley started in the first game and was 0 for 3 with a walk. And the breaking ball drops in for a strike. Another strike, 0 and 2. Soft stuff.
First and second, two outs. Pitch upstairs. Did he hold up? Yes, he did, said Toby Basner. We get the benefit of the second look, and yeah, he held up. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, two on. It's a 3-3 game, top of the sixth. Switch hitting Headley against the righty Jimenez. Time is called. Strike three, Headley down looking. No runs a hit, no errors, and two men left on base. So he dropped in a breaking ball, and Headley could not pull the trigger. We go to the bottom of the six, tied at three. The slow internet behind. Get Fios. Michael Pineda will start for the Yankees, 12 and 9, and he's in there against Chris Tillman, who started the season for the Orioles. He was their opening day pitcher, and now he's going to close it. And uh, he's trying to get his record to 500. And Machado takes a strike as we start at the bottom of the sixth. Machado with a home run in two at bats, one for two. Home run is 35th to solo shot. And he also had a home run in the first game. Second inning in Arizona. Bottom of the second. Houston won. And the Diamondbacks nothing. A Yankee win or an Astros loss. And the Yankees clinch. The home game on Tuesday. Two and two. Toronto leads Tampa Bay a three to two, bottom of the eighth inning, trying to keep pace with Kansas City, which beat Minnesota five to one, ending a really surprising fine season for the Twins in terms of a playoff bid. Two two. Foul away.
And the pitch. Swing and a miss. Got him. One away. The most popular way to follow the Yankees is with MLB.com at bat. The number one app for live baseball. Enjoy live look-ins, highlights, replay reviews, scores, stat cast, live radio broadcast, and more. Get MLB.com at bat and get it now. Here's Chris Davis. Shift is on. Three infielders on the right side for Davis. And he hits it the other way. And the air and out of play. Now we have seen over the years Davis has power to all fields. He's got one home run, a one hand home run power. I mean, the top hand will come off the bat, follows through, and he still gets enough of it to get it out of the park. Did he hold up? Yes, he did. Rounded to first. And off of Bird. Grabbed by Ruff Snyder. And he throws it past Severino. Backing up is McCann. Going to second is Davis. And he is out on the tag by Gregorius. What a wild play. Great backup by McCann. As the ball got past Severino. And then McCann to Gregorius. Now Davis now walking off the field. Hot smash. Bird has it hit off his glove. Ref's tied it comes up with it looking for Severino. Can't find him. McCann's in the neighborhood. Picks the ball up. Throws the ball in the dirt. Great pick by Gregorius at second. And the question is, did he make the tag at second? Well, Davis is still hanging out around second. Does he take another look? This looks like a little pinball play. Does he get him? Not there. Just him there. Does Davis get in the back door? I, think, ooh, I, don't know. I don't know either. He tagged him in the chest, but did he get his left hand or right hand on the bag first? Here's a little better angle. There's the first attempt. Doesn't get it. We can't see the left hand. He can't see the left hand. But there was a tag made. Is there enough there? Is it enough to overturn this? There's longtime trainer Richie Bansells, and he's going to give the answer to uh, Buck Showalter. Should they challenge this? Looks like they are. Unless they have a more definitive angle than the one we have, I don't know if you can overturn it because we can't tell. This when, might be the best one. Did his hands get to the bag? Not the right hand. I, you know, remember the the call on the field is out, uh -huh. so you have to overturn that call. Is there enough there to overturn that call? The Red Sox, or should I say, the Orioles are rolling the dice and thinking that it will be overturned. If I had a bet, Kenny, I'd say no. no. I'd say no as well, Michael. But we really didn't see the left hand. I don't know if uh, the Orioles telecast has a left-handed view. I'll tell you what, it was a great pick by Gregorius on a very hard throw by Brian McCann. Now they're showing the play on the scoreboard in center, and all four Yankee infielders and Severino as well as Davis looking. The second base umpire Sam Holbrook signaled out. You know what? I don't think his left hand's on the bag there, so he would be out. That last little uh, clip we saw. Left hand, keep an eye on that. I don't think he's on the bag as of yet. Is oh, it is really close. But remember, as Michael said, he was originally called out. And they say he's out. Yeah, that's the way it's going to stay. And all, honestly, he might have been safe, but with the replays that non-conclusive, you cannot overturn it. I think if he was called safe originally, they would not have overturned him. So they scored that a hit? One error. I 
I think it's an error on Bird. Uh -huh. It is an E3. Three, four, two, six. So two way and an 0-2 count on Pierce. Pierce with an RBI double in the first and the fly ball right in the fourth. Rounded up the middle, Gregorius fields and fires to first. And that will do it. No runs, no hits, one error. Nobody left on base. We're going to the seventh inning in a tie game, 3-3. Three, three. As Ubaldo Jimenez's night is over, and they go to the left hander, TJ McFarlane. Also, if you were keeping score at home on that play at second base, you don't give an assist no. to Ref Snyder, so you just scored 2 6 as McCann threw it to Gregorius. So Buck used his challenge and did not get the call overturned. Now we go to the seventh inning knotted at three. This copyrighted telecast presented by authority of the New York Yankees. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the aforementioned New York Yankees. Top of the order, Jacoby Ellsbury. So Showalter sees the two lefties at the top of the lineup, Ellsbury and Ackley, and brings in McFarland. And McFarland drops in a breaking ball strike. Mike, I got a question. Okay. You saw Chris Davis stand out at second. It's almost as if he was telling his manager to challenge. Now, can a manager just sit, come back in here? You understand what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to do it. Or because it's a player that's, you know, one of your better players telling you. This is worthy of the challenge. You, you understand what I mean? No, I do. And uh -huh. I, I think it happened at Yankee Stadium, and Gregorius wanted Girardi to challenge, and they looked at the replay and they said, "No, come on back." Uh -huh. I think players always think they're safe. Yeah, they do. Yeah. And it's really not disrespecting Davis if you don't challenge. Because hey, the video doesn't show that you're safe. But I guess it was so close, and Davis was so certain. He decided to use his challenge. So the Yankees will pinch it for Ackley and send up Chris Young.
Young had a hit and two at bats in the first game, a triple. Grounded, foul, first base side, one and one. Bottom of the ninth inning in St. Pete. Toronto leads the Rays three to two. And again, a reminder the winner of the wild card goes up against the team with the best record in the American League. And with the two wild cards, you can now be a wild card from the East and play an Eastern Division team in the next round because they discontinued that you could not play a team that played in your division. 1 1. Swing and a miss. 1 and 2 on the change. Top of the third inning, Houston one and Arizona nothing. And if you missed it earlier, the Angels over Texas 11 10. Angels scoring five runs in the ninth inning for a dramatic victory. Would you say three of those runs? At least two of them came with two outs. Mm -hmm. Maybe three. And Bannister, the Ranger manager. Tried to close the ninth inning with Tolleson, and it was the fifth straight day he had used Tolleson. You could see that Tolleson was gassed. Uh -huh. And he had to go to Ollendorf, and Ollendorf uh, couldn't get that last out. One, two. And a lot of times, the Angels hitters had two strikes. They also had fortune on their side. A pop up by Hulls yeah. ended up dropping. And off the glove of Odor for a double. It was, it was a, a great inning of baseball. Yeah, it was uh, very exciting. And the fact that it was played in Texas, that, that crowd was stunned. And now, the big question is well, who do the Rangers have to pitch in relief tomorrow? Yeah, they, they, a win today, they would have wrapped up the division. Yep. Swing and a miss. Young strikes out on the changeup, two away. This is going to have plenty of fade to it. Man, acting like a splitter. Here's Beltron. He walked with the bases loaded to force in the Yankees' third run. That tied the game in the fifth inning. And McFarland drops in a strike. Now coming into the night, Yankee pinch hitters had the top batting average in the league. They're hitting 260. The league average for pinch hitters, just 215. It's not an easy job. And you're usually pinch hitting against a hard throwing reliever. Yeah. Usually. Three infielders on the left side for Beltron, only Davis on the right. So the switcher to batting from the right. McFarland deals the 1 1. 2 and 1. Three three game. Top of the seventh inning, two outs, nobody on for the Yanks. Rounded to third, tough hop, but Machado fields and guns it over to first. And the Yankees are down in order, one, two, three, at the end of six and a half time for the seventh inning stretch. It's 3 3 in Baltimore.
route. He'll face Clevenger, Joseph, and Flaherty in a 3-3 game. Yankees had opportunities to score more runs, and let's take a look at the fifth inning right here. Yeah, the fifth inning is uh, an opportunity with McCann up with the bases low, and he pops out and flies out to right field, and uh, Jimenez escapes a jam. Then in the sixth inning, Yankees going to leave two men off as Chase Headley came up to pinch hit, called out on strikes, but runners at first and second. So the Yankees have Chris Young in left field. Remember, he pinch hit for Ackley. And he struck out against McFarland. So now it, it becomes a battle of the O's bullpen against Severino. And the Yankees bullpen obviously is poised to get in there. And the first batter for the O's in the bottom of the seventh is Clevenger, who's 0 for 2. A ground ball to third, a ground ball back to the mound. Now the O's have a uh, recent history on their side in the last eight double headers they've played they've won the second game of the double header and there's a strike don't know what that means but it's occurred last eight games last eight double headers they've won game two well they always used to say if you lose game one you win game two you get the laugh in the shower I guess yeah. If you win game one and game two, you really get the laugh. And if you lose both, it's a really long day. Yeah. It's, it's like losing before a long plane flight. The one two. There's a change up from Severino. He's used that uh, seems quite effectively tonight, more often. Heard Jack say that uh, really didn't have his best stuff tonight. We haven't really seen the blazing fastball. He's got four strikeouts. Swing and a miss. Oh, my. So Clevenger down on strikes, and we go to Bob Lorenz for an update, Robert. Amazing race out there in the West as Joseph takes low 1 0. Also, worth noting, Houston in three of its more important games in a very long time playing without the DH because it's an interleague matchup. Line right to Gregorius. Two away. You know, enough Houston and the Texas Rangers. Two you know, pretty young ball clubs. They're going to develop quite an in state rivalry. Well, they play for the silver boot, I believe. The, the, whoever wins the season series gets the silver boot. I'm not sure how that broke down this year, but uh, those are two teams that should be good for a while. Flaherty takes a strike from Severino. Was one of the reasons why the Major League Baseball wanted the Houston Astros to shift over to the American League so they could have that rivalry with the Texas Rangers. One and two. Swing and miss an impressive Ooh. seventh inning for Luis Severino as he retires the Orioles in order one two three with two strikeouts but going to the eighth nail biting time.
and the Orioles in their series finale at Camden Yards. Coverage starts at 2 in Audi batting practice today in the Tri-State 4 pregame. Then we'll have all the action from here in Baltimore right here on Yes. Looks like Severino tonight is over. Shaking hands in the Yankee dugout as we go to the eighth inning of a 3-3 tie. McFarland still in there, and he will face McCann leading off the eighth. Baseball did a smart thing a couple years ago. Every game tomorrow will start at 3.05 Eastern time. Yeah. So that nobody could back in with a loss. See, Dylan Batances is up. And every game will be nail-biting time if you're playing for something. So all games start at that time. Games on the West Coast will start at 12. So 0-2 quickly on... McCann. Nubbed in front of the plate. Joseph gets McCann for the first out here in the eighth. So far, McFarlane has retired all four batters he's faced. Darren O'Day is up for the Orioles. Tampa Bay comes back to beat Toronto four to three. I wonder if that was Roberto Osuna in the ninth inning, and uh, he's been having some issues lately. I've been told it was young Mr. Osuna. Tap back to McFarland. Bob Lorenz has some news. Robert. It's amazing because down the stretch when they still had a chance, Kenny, he didn't pitch well. Mm -hmm. But he's had great moments this year for the Nationals. Here's Rob Snyder. So Kenny, Kansas City beats Minnesota today. So Kansas City's 93 and 67. Toronto just lost in the bottom of the ninth inning, 92 and 68. Again, the winner of the wild card if the season ended right now would have to play the Kansas City Royals because they have a better record than the Toronto Blue Jays. Crowd of 35,198 announced here at Camden Yards. Uh, strike on the outside corner. Rev Snyder, two more hits in this game a double, a run scored, and a single, and a stolen base. So 3-1 on the Yankee second baseman. It was 2 for 3 tonight. And a hit in the first game. 3-3 three, three game, top of the eighth. Ground ball to second. Flaherty is right there. And he will get Ref Snyder. And McFarland six up, six down, and two innings of relief. We go to the bottom of the eighth inning. It's a 3-3 three, three game. Batances coming in.
Goes you a 3-3 game. Severino, seven solid innings, and he turns it over to Dellen Batances. And 9-1-2 and two due up for the O's. And it starts with Paul Janish. The numbers on Batances. This is his 74th game. Janish has grounded the third and then doubled to third off the glove of the then third baseman, Brendan Ryan. Now Chase Headley's over third, playing even with the bag, guarding against Giannis laying down a bunt. Foul back to the screen. We had wondered who had won the silver boot this year. The, the Rangers won it handily. 13 to 5 over the Astros in their matchups this year. Served into right field. Ref Snyder on the run. Dives and can't make the play. A leadoff single for Giannis. What an effort by Ref Snyder. Could not make the play. Looked like a wide receiver trying to run down a long touchdown pass. Here's the effort just out of his reach. And Giannis has his second hit. This time a leadoff single here in the eighth. Once again, the last look, the all out effort comes up a little short. Concentration, time to leave his feet, but not quite enough. Rymold takes a strike on the breaking ball. Quickened his delivery there to keep Giannis close to first to count only two. Zach Britton's up for the O's. He's their closer. He's having a good year. That one gets away from McCann. Giannis takes off. He'll go to second. He goes to second on the wild pitch. Bloop single. Now this uh, breaking ball in the dirt off the glove. Chest protector squirts away. And Giannis is going to move down to second base. Defense for Reimold is Ref Snyder shading up the middle. And Bird off the line at first. Big strikeout, no advance of the base runner. But Tance's calling card is either that 99 mile per hour fastball or that sweeping breaking ball. That Sharp slider. He goes to the slider, picks up the strikeout. So here's Para. One for three tonight. Go ahead, runs at second base for the O's. That's Paul Giannis. All in one. Astros two, Arizona nothing, top of the fourth inning. And the 0-1. One and one. Pitch 
And it's a push punt. Headley, bare hands, no play. Good idea for Parra as Headley was back and he picks up a bunt single. And now the go ahead runs 90 feet away. Boy, this is very well executed by Parra. Just drops it down. He had Headley back. No chance to get the runner at first. Now first and third in one out. With the three and four hitters coming up to the plate. All started with a bloop single. Here's Manny Machado. Hurt the Yankees in the first game. Has a home run and two strikeouts here in the second game. 35 homers on the season. The Yankees cannot play back for the double play. They bring the infield in. And had a fastball strike going on. We're in the bottom of the eighth inning. A game tied at three. Patances on a relief of Severino and the 0 1. Breaking ball swung on and missed 0 and 2. Chances taking his time. A one two count on the dangerous number three hitter in the lineup, Manny Machado. And the one two. And it gets past McCann. Here comes Giannis. He scores. And the Orioles lead four to three. Second wild pitch of the inning. Scores the go ahead run. So the bloop single moved to second on a wild pitch, then on a butt, and then another wild pitch. As Janish comes in to score. Now a 2 2 count on Machado with a runner at second. Three and two. And holds on to it too late. Boy, he wanted it upstairs. He wanted the fastball out of the zone to get Manny to chase. And pulled it down and away. Runner goes to third. Ball swung on and missed. Machado is saying that he foul tipped it. Moving to third is Parra. So Machado's down on the strikeout. And now there are two outs and brings up Chris Davis. They're going to put him on and go after the right handed hitter. So this is about as soft a rally as you'll get, but the run counts nonetheless. Blooper, bunt, a couple of wild pitches, and the Orioles are up four to three. Here's ball four. Now we throw back to Bob Lorenz. Bob, did Matt Scherzer get a no hitter or not? Wow, that's pretty good company. Ooh. Strange season for Scherzer, as we mentioned, but he has the two no hitters in his first year with the Nats. 
check swing and a breaking ball, but the first base up. Mark Wagner said he went around. Count only one on Pierce. And he did it with only 109 pitches. And in this yeah. day and age, that's pretty amazing. Yeah. And he has all the strikeouts, too. To have that low of a, uh, a pitch count. Sound like the Mets were completely overmatched. Runner goes from first. And it's fouled away. And the Mets, A, are, are, are a good team, B, a pretty good hitting team, and C, playing for something as they're trying to get home field advantage yeah. over the Dodgers. Caleb Cotham is up for the Yankees. Leo two. One and two. Power is at third. Davis intentionally walked. He's at first. O's lead four to three. And the one two. Did he go? Yes, he did. So. Patances escaped further trouble by striking out Pierce, but the Orioles take the lead. One run, two soft hits, two wild pitches, two left. We go to the ninth. All the highlights and analysis from tonight's game, plus the reaction from the clubhouse and Joe Girardi's manager's report. It's all coming up on the WB Mason Yankees postgame, only on Yes. Well, now the Yankees have to rally again. Zach Britton, who's having a very good year, 35 of 39 with a 1.98 ERA, his 63rd game of the year, 78 strikeouts in 63 and two-third innings. They tighten up the defense. David Lowe takes over. For Reimold in center, D.D. Gregorius leads off here in the ninth. Thing about Britain, it's very tough to get the ball in the air against him. He's a very hard sinker, mid 90s sinker. And a strike. If I remember correctly, only 25% of the balls put in play against Zach Britton go in the air. And plus that he's a strikeout type pitcher. Saw so A-Rod come out on deck for Heathcott. He goes around one and two. Yankees are trying to avoid getting swept. Did he go around? Close. Looks like he did.
And the one two. Slow ground ball to second. Flaherty. He'll get Gregorius for the first out. And the boos are for Alex Rodriguez as he pinch hits for Heathcock. A big spot for A Rod here in the ninth. Decent numbers against Britain, five for 13. He has kept him in the park, but A-Rod hitting at a 385 clip. Heathcott was one for two with a walk, a double, and a run batted in. The 1 bounced up there, one and one. Alex has uh, had eight pinch hit at bats this year, and he's got three hits, including a pinch hit homer. And he's driven in three runs off the bench for the Yankees this year. Dialed it up to 97. He throws free and easy 97. It's on you. And Britain deals the one two. Bounced up there. Well, if the Yankees don't come back and the Astros don't we lose their 2 0 lead in the bottom of the fourth to the Diamondbacks? Tomorrow becomes oh so important. It'll be Michael Pineda against Chris Tillman in the final game of the regular season. Now, the Yankees are in the playoffs, but the only thing uh, in doubt who they're playing and where they're playing that game on Tuesday. Two two inside three and two. Chase Headley, who pinch it in the sixth, is on deck. Three two ground it. Through for a base hit, a pinch single for A Rod. And the Yankees will send Rico Noel in the pinch run for Alex. We mentioned balls hit on the ground, but this one's hit sharply and through the hole. Manny Machado guarding the line to prevent an extra base hit down the line. And Alex Rodriguez now four for nine as a pinch hitter this season. He certainly had not had much experience doing it. Always an everyday player, but he seems to be uh, getting into a rhythm doing that. I wonder if DHing helps. Might. Yeah. It's like four pinch hitting appearances. Yeah, exactly. All right, so let's see if and when Noel goes with Headley at the plate. Noel got his first big league hit in the first inning, or the first game. He's five for six, stealing bases. Headley was up as a pinch hitter with runners on first and second, two outs in the sixth. He looked at a call third strike. And that's a pretty good lead against a left hander. Headley 0 for 5 against Britain Lifetime. And he picked them off. And Noel 
He is out. Britton has a good move. Noel was itchy to get a good jump, and he gets picked off. One, three, four. It's called caught stealing. Britton held on to the ball a little bit longer that time, and Noel, sensing that he was going to the plate, takes off for second. Flaherty steps in front of Janish and makes the tag of Noel. That wasn't the best throw to first by Britton. He kind of handcuffed. Chris Davis, but he still made the play. So two away Yankees down to their final out. And Headley dribbles one back to the mound. And the Yankees have gotten swept in the double header and still have not clinched home field in the wild card. They lose nine to two in the day portion. They lose four to three here in the nightcap. Yankees have lost five of six games this week. One more game to go, and it could be an important one. So they lose four to three. We'll go back to the studio where Bob Lorenz, Jack Curry, and John Flaherty will set the table for the rest of the night, guys.